Hi, this is Greg Hildebrandt. I've been a professional artist for 62 years. I've done a lot of artwork in that time, and I'm still just trying to get it right. Step out of the way so everyone yeah. can see that. Hello, Mr. Hildebrandt. How are you doing, Keith? Nice to see you again. I am. I like this present day format that we have together yeah, as opposed to the electric viewer, yeah. the electric talker. I like this too. It feels a little bit more like Masterpiece Theater. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Masterpiece Theater. Master, Master. All right. So I'm oh. seeing graphics in our comments today. It says add so and so and add so and so. So we can you could actually read the comments today? I don't know if I can or not. So I can hey, read them. Hey everybody who's uh watching, thank you very much for tuning in. You're you're reading them, Gene? Yeah, I'm reading them. Adrian says say something. Say something? Hi, I just got here. I haven't had a chance to look around yet, but I guess that's the object directly in front of me. Half buried in a vast pit. It must have struck with terrific force because the ground is covered with splinters of a tree. It must have struck on its way down. What I can see of the object doesn't look much like a meteor. I, I always do that. That's that's from Orson Welles' Martian Invasion on the radio in, from 1938. Carl Phillips is the reporter on the scene observing the Martians landing. Yes. Anyway. I've, I've listened to that radio broadcast uh, numerous times. started when I was in high school. Yeah. But uh, I discovered that in a lot of the old radio dramas and found that I have, I have an affinity for them. So I have listened to a ton of The Shadow and The Whistler. <laughs> you could create all the imagery in your head. Yeah. I mean, you know, be, be, before TV, I mean, that's what we did. We sat there and wait till Saturday night to turn The Shadow on. And sat there, or, or a house of mystery, the squeaking door. You hear this clang. <laughs> you know, you you would get terrified. It's a little kid. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I, I love those things. I work to them a lot. So anyway, so that's whatever that's about. Hey, Jean, if there is a great comment, shout it out because I will. I'm yeah, seeing right now. Just say hello to everybody. I'm seeing the comments come up, but it's just their their I, icons for whether they're on YouTube Sam, or Facebook. Sam says he listens to the World War of the World every. Ah, that's that's when it was first aired. Yes, it was aired, and, and then you know it was thirty eight. So Hitler was rising to power. So everybody's the whole world was paranoid in America, and it, it's like everyone was extremely gullible and not scientifically wise, because while the broadcast is going on, they're observing explosions of incandescent gas on the planet Mars. And that yeah. well, we, well, we interrupt it in this book. And you go back to music, you know, like a big band sound, me playing music. What well, we interrupt the show to bring, you know, it, the Martians land in a matter of minutes from Mars to, to the Earth, you know. So, now, do you think um, there is any form of media that could pull one over on everybody the way that did? No, it's impossible. It, it, first of all, now I think right after that show, there were laws passed, you know, inhibiting people from pulling that off again. You know, presenting it as though it was a real event. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, at the beginning, they say it, it's a show. But that, I think that's... If you turn on in the middle, if you don't turn on at the opening of the Mercury Theater on the air, or Orson yeah. Welles, blah, blah, blah. You know, you don't know that. So you're, you're cutting, you're just clicking around the radio stage, radio, and you come upon music playing. Oh, I like that music. And then all of a sudden, you know, somebody, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this broadcast, you know. So and then it's like very real. It's just all, you know, reporters and it's yeah. pretty crazy. I wonder. Yeah, I, I wonder if we have enough faith in any particular media. Things were simple. I mean, per people, I mean, you remember, what was it, 38? We hadn't entered the war. The World War II hadn't started yet. World War One was kind of like a long ways off already. There was always tension in the world, but and in, in now, like I say, Hitler was rising to power, so there was a fear and anxiety and paranoia that was in the air everywhere. Uh, I, you know, only talking with people later on. Obviously, I wasn't born for another year yet, but my parents remembered it. 
Well, they, they listened to the show here in because the Wells had the Martians land in New Jersey, Rovers Mill, New Jersey. Rovers Mill, yep. And so Jersey people panicked. They were like freaking out and trying to flee. You know, <laughs> it's like it's like anyway. It, I don't know if the, anything would ha nothing would have that. I don't think. Yeah, how could it? First of all, it's a film. You know, it's a film. You know, here yeah. you think it's a live radio show that's really happening out there. Yeah. So just that alone. But it's the absolute faith in in the media of the time that they wouldn't they, w they, they wouldn't pull the wool over your eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I don't. Well, first of all, I don't think anybody had anything to base it on for you know nothing like that had ever been done before. Yeah. So nobody was prepared. You know what I'm saying? They were. They so you're you're like you're just hearing. It sounds very real when you listen to it, right? Yep. Yeah. It, it's it's just very real. It it's, could be now, you know. But no, I mean, I think impossible to pull off. It's just by the nature of technology and yeah. you know, communic. You know, it's like you know, we hear it and then pull yeah. up my phone. Yeah, yeah. Is the Martians? Are the Martians there? Do you see them yet? So apparently, and I don't know. I've never been there. But there's a you know because the Martians in you know, Wells A.G. Wells original story were tripod machines. Yep. And then of course Wells keeps them like that in the thing. They rise up out of this you know rocket cylinder. Yeah. And they start zapping. And and they walk and everything. But some farmer panicking out here in Jersey, I guess in that zone, went out with his shotgun and, and saw a water tower and blasted shot it, mistaking it momentarily for a, for a Martian machine. <laughs> I'm like, that's really kind of <laughs> whatever. But it probably had four legs, but in the moment he didn't count the legs. You know what I'm saying? In a moment of panic. Right. <laughs> and it's always three. There's always three. The George Powell's masterpiece of the 50s, The War of the Worlds, his take which I love. And I remember, and there's always updates. They're always about threes. You know, there's three, and the original three tripod. Yeah? James talking. Painting that's behind you as far as why you painted it? We haven't gotten to the painting yet. We've been indulging, talking <laughs> in lunacy. So we're going to get to the painting now. Okay, so do me a favor. Stop the lunacy. Go to the painting because people are asking. What the hell is that? You know, what's the painting? What's the concept? Why'd you do it? Okay. Okay? Patience. Someone Patience, my dear Patience folks. Patience. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> anyway. This painting I did quite a few years ago, probably 72, 1972, 73, somewhere in that vicinity. It came out of my own personal experiences at the time. At the same time that the black, the painting that Black Sabbath called Mob Rules used for their cover on their Mob Rules album cover, but which was originally a painting that I did that appeared in an art book. That painting also came from the same time frame where I was going through a lot of uh, heavy-duty changeover. And transformation of the mind. Transformation of the mind, yes, in terms of religion, politics, philosophy, history, you name it. The whole, my eyes were peeled, my brain was getting peeled. You know, like you're, you're raised in a shell in a little parochial provincial world like I was, and knowledge mm -hmm. and beliefs. And suddenly when I came to New York from Michigan, to work here in the job that I had, I became aware of the world condition, like in a, nut, in, a, in, a in a lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. And it's like you're hit by a, a, a tsunami in terms of the realization of the injustices globally, in terms of poverty and misery, warfare, which, you know, you, never, you know, I thought about that stuff growing up in Michigan, but you never really saw it firsthand like I did when I got here. and started to change. I mean, right, it was 63, 4, 5, 1963, 4, 5. The man I was working for, Bishop Fulton J. Sheen, whose job, uh, his uh, one of his obsessions was bringing Americans to an awareness of the third world, and that's what I was making films about for him, his world of hunger and poverty, mm -hmm. and to show to Americans to kind of like bring their consciousness, uh, awareness up, which was really not there even at that time, like it is now. People weren't globally... To, to a degree, it is there now, but yeah. To a degree, maybe. But yeah. then it was this complete... You never thought about those things. You, you never think about the things you don't think about. Yep. So in here, and I was... That was for me. And so 
but then too that when he was kicked out of that office because he was too concerned about humanity, I'm being polite. Uh, uh, you know, they booted him out of that office, the church, and new regime took over. And I was already changing to, to, to the bishop, actually bringing me to an awareness of the world. Not, that was his intent that I would eventually leave religion, not by a long shot. <laughs> but it was all that stuff, some turmoil, politics, like I see it in these. I would, in this particular one, I it came from that, that point. Generally, most of them do, except the, the one that became mob rules. That came from a deep state, of, you know, REM state, I guess, would you call it. This came in that point where your consciousness is leaving you and your subconscious is taking over as you're drifting off to sleep. You know, where they just kind of like merge at that twilight zone place right there. And that image forms in me, not exactly like that, but the gist of that image form. I see it. And that happens to me now, too, every once in a while. You know, the, the thing will sh sh thing. And it isn't because I've tried to elicit the image. It just came on its own. Yeah. The image came as to a graphic as to what I was personally experiencing. Yes. So now, I paint the, now what it is, you can see there's this man underneath. You see the legs here. He's underneath of this crucifix. And what appears to be the body of Jesus Christ is on the crucifix. And this man is underneath of it, hauling it through this trash and garbage dump sort of like place. That was what the image was. And then I, I just, it struck me emotionally. It grabbed me. I said, what? What is this? You know, to myself. And then I drew sketches of it and, drew, and, and posed for it. Then I posed for both of these guys and worked from the photographs. And gradually as I'm painting it and working it, I'm realizing what the hell it is. As I was painting it, yeah. it isn't like you know when you do a, an illustration, you know you're drawing a picture of Spider-Man and he's swinging past the, the Empire State Building. You know it ahead of time. You know exactly what's in there, what's good, what, what it's all about. Mm -hmm. This, I only saw that graphic, not understanding what it was. And then as I'm painting this guy, I realized, well, wait a minute, how's he carrying this cross? Oh, his arms. He's got his arms out like this. He's nailed up. The nails are in his hands. You can see there's no nails in this Christ figure at all. He's clean as can be. He's neat as can be with a little gold trim. There's a gold halo on his pure white cross. And look at the feet. He's the guy that's bleeding from his feet. And there's a trail of blood that follows. So he's the crucified one. He's the one guy that's suffering. This is not Christ. As I'm painting this, I'm realizing this is the institutional church. The power structure, the politics of the church, the economical church, yeah. the political church. There's the guy. And again, okay, so it was me. It, it's almost every man, so to speak, in a way yeah. you kind of like, that's what the picture is. But it, the, the, like I say, the, the point about it too, not only is the, the image that grabbed me, but the not knowing him completely what the image was until I started to actually work on it. You know, that usually doesn't happen. That the, that the meaning of the picture starts to arrive at you as you work it. Yeah. You know, I know that that's a whole different way of working, and probably many people work that way. I think in surrealism and stuff, right? Yeah. But yeah. for me, those are a little, those are unusual events, and I enjoy the hell out of it because it, it takes on a whole other layer or level of meaning and personal. But then again, here, my, this is my photorealist period, too. If you get down close, you can see there isn't an inch of this thing that isn't covered with detail. The tiny, and, and I had this thing about, I guess, making this so real as you could step into it, so hyper real that you could step mm -hmm. into it. Yeah. Now, this is one of those paintings where anyone, anyone that looks at it is going to have some kind of opinion mm -hmm. <laughs> they're going to be affected in in one way or another now they might look at it and oh this is what this is and be completely wrong mm -hmm. but i i don't see this as being a painting that that anyone could look at and just walk on by or just glance over or not give a second thought mm -hmm. to uh, 
it's, I think, yeah, probably my favorite painting that you've ever done. I, I appreciate that. It's probably one of mine too. Uh, and it, it, this is the kind of thing that I think is uh, the ult ultimate of painting for me. If I could achieve things on that level in terms of, because you're just going beyond a pretty picture, you, you know, or, or a powerful picture, even, or, you know, a beautifully composed picture, mm -hmm. a beautifully drawn picture, lit and colored. You're now go, move into a, another realm here that's, first of all, it's hyper-personal, so it's really dealing with you know, my own emotions and my own experiences. And on the hot, hopefully, like you say, people won't will give it a cursory glance, that they'll be pulled into it and start to try to engage themselves in it, enter the picture, look at it and think it cause thoughts to start to occur and churn yeah that's like an ultimate objective that le leads to a personal experience on the viewer's part of possibly elevating their consciousness and you know yes and you know we've been talking about expression a lot lately and we kind of went off on the the you know maybe the politics of expression <laughs> a, a, yeah. a little bit um in with our intention being coming from uh the the art place and the the need for expression and i think when you know when i look at this the the other part of that equation is not only an artist needing to express themselves or an artist uh, needs to have the ability or the right to express themselves but the artist having something worthwhile to say, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that those, the, those things don't necessarily come in a straightforward manner or a condensed sentence or no, they don't. A, a, anything like that. They're in a very roundabout. And they'll come at you like, like this did uh, uh, unexpectedly without you dwelling on it, without you even thinking about it. It's coming from the experience you're going through. Yeah, but it forms that experience. The subconscious mind forms it into a graphic image. Yeah, which is which is like not a conscious effort. <laughs> yeah, you're not sitting here. Oh, let me. How can I come up with this? You know, the conscious effort is applied to job that you're a job or a painting for yourself for anybody yeah. that you know what it is already. Oh, I got to do this. Got to do this. You compose it. You here. It's it's this to me is the ultimate, and they don't happen all the time. No. So. It, and, you know, we've been talking about William Blake and the poetry and the paintings mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you and I have been going back and forth, which I need to need to read the book, but of the Gnosticism and uh, what, is, what is the quote? The, the Blake's quote, which is really his, you know, he has this whole creation of, of the creation story in God, in, 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 in the whole, whole business of Christianity and and religion but he said in his his belief system was that painting poetry and music are the three powers in man conversing with paradise this is how in his opinion because he was a poet and he was a painter and he was a printmaker yep. but you know he throws music into that where he played an instrument I don't know. Uh, but these are in touch with what paradise in his word yeah so call it what you will. Yeah. You know, not it, it, he, doesn't, he doesn't say politics, religion, and science are, are, are those are the big those no. are the big three. He in fact had a view of them that were, and it wasn't like that were not on that level. They were of the of the of the demiurge, mm -hmm. of, the, of the lesser god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the mad god, you know. Yes. Yep. Uh, that he that the Gnostics, if you read that whole structure of the beliefs, <laughs> it's kind of intriguing. You know, just as a, you know, just as yeah. a, like, again, I have to state that I don't personally believe it intrigue. It, it's intriguing to me. Any other thought that you're not brought up with and that has an alternate view that's really kind of like probing and interesting, I find very appealing. Because he also says that imagination, mm -hmm. like, and I, and I, and I, and I, that once he uses the word, the imagination was huge with him. His statement is. The imagination is the body of God. Go, you know, there, it's like 
that's God made. That thought that you have is what is God. That is God. And I that appeals to me because my mother used to, not that she was into any, into William Blake per se. Okay. I mean, maybe yeah. she was. I don't know. Yeah. You know what we're talking about. Uh, that your imagination is the most valuable thing you possess. Yes. Hammering at that to my brother and me from the little kids mm -hmm. and really making that point so that that's like, that's it, baby. And then when you hear Einstein's quote, imagination is more important than knowledge. It's like, wow. So you read Blake's statement here. It's, it, it's, it's interesting. It's very, it, I, yes. I, I agree with you. And it, and it touches a certain chord, uh, you know, particularly for people who, you know, think like myself or, you know, please correct me if I'm, I'm wrong on here, but you, you don't just walk out in the world and just say, yeah, this is it. Right. No. Right. There has to be some deeper well that reminds me of the peggy lee song is that all there is yeah it's just all there is. i forgot she's listed a whole bunch of stuff it's a beautiful song is that all there is you know it's yeah. like no oh, no there's a lot more a lot more than playing golf running around in your boat even though things great things to do yep uh taking vacations uh, uh making money uh, uh you know it's all necessary and all and all this stuff but that that is it's just one part of it, it, it that's a part of it and that's that's that you know. So uh, it, it, I'm not. Don't take me wrong. I'm not belittling that. That's not the issue yeah. here. So, but that's a world I don't know anything about. Very little about. And so, yeah, it. You know, of having that hammered into your head by your mom. You see a quote like that, and oh, it, you're in boom. Inside the room, it's on another level. Man. And to, to kind of go off on a little tangent. Cool question here. And then we'll come back around to all this. But when did it become a thing of where you can't have a conversation about an idea or a concept that you don't necessarily believe in or agree with, but you're just having a conversation? You know, it's like, oh, we have the conversation. Like, he said this. Yeah, I know. They start throwing bricks at each other, <laughs> shooting at each other. You know, it's like yeah. there's no exchange of ideas that hopefully one can take from the other yeah. and build a new separate yeah brand new thing so take a little bit from this you give a little that person gives something and that's the whole thing that it makes it i mean that's i always thought that that's what the world was all about me too you know i believe that that's that's the, that's isn't that is, is that, isn't that what it's about yeah you so, know okay good so what i'm saying yeah <laughs> so now it's all this what's, what's that word they use throw around these days it's like two 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 separate yes everything's very Binary, very black and white. If two sides, two sides. What are, what, are, what are ultimately fucking stupid, lazy, dumb, ignorant, disinteresting, boring view of the universe that is? That's yes. a, that, that's all. Is that all there is, Peggy Lee? Is that that's all it. There is. That's that's it. We have two ideas, and that's it. All of the billions of years of history of the universe can be boiled down to two ideas. Two ideas. Two. To, to come across all the belief systems that have even been evolved by humans. How many of them? Untold amounts Untold over the amounts. centuries, right? To say nothing of what are the possibilities on other planets of concepts and ideas and thoughts. And, you know? Yeah. To, if you zoom, you, I hear the politics today of this bullshit. All that goes on. You, you, in my mind, I'm always zooming back for those long views of the Earth. Well, that's all going on. Yeah. And see, do you realize what you are? All you, you're just, you're this, this teeny thing in this long flow of history on this orb floating around, circling the sun and spinning. And you, you act like your thing, your momentary idiocy is everything. Is everything. It's and, everything. And in reality is that you will not last longer than a cosmic fart. Boom. You're here and gone. And, and what will you remember for assaulting somebody, beating somebody up, attacking somebody, you know, like, it, oh, I got him good. You know, the orc mentality, you know, the orc mentality of the, of the 
which I never knew the orc. Man. I'm reading William Blake again and going mm -hmm. back, and the orc was an ancient word. I didn't even, how stupid I am, you know, when I did illustrate the Lord of the Rings. If I would have gotten to the grasp of the original word orc, I would have already signed the orcs the way I did. You know, we were talking about this a little bit ago, and I was with you. I always, and maybe my first, uh, you know, the first time I came across the word was in Lord of the Rings. But so what, what, what were you saying? The it's, it's the bully. It's the, it's the punk. It's the, it's the, 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 the arrogant uh, 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 brown shirt. Hitler's brown shirts. You know, okay. it, it's that, that the low base bullying, beating up the little guy, mocking, making fun of, co hating, causing hatred, ultimately causing warfare and being warfare like and monstrous and warfare like. It's, it's starting with that punk in the somewhere and building to that kind of a monster. I think it would have made it much more monstrously humanoid, probably. But then again, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's just a thought that I was having. <laughs> it's just a momentary lapse of something. <laughs> I, th I thought, how many years removed from the from the painting of? Hmm. Hmm. If I could be, if I if I if I did it over, I wouldn't do it the same way. But you know, that's that's art. That's what you're. Well, oh, that's an interesting question. Maybe not an interesting question, but hopefully we get an interesting answer. So, looking back at Lord of the Rings, if would you paint them the exact same way? No, or? no, no. no. What would you do different? Oh hell, I don't know until I sat there and did it. <laughs> I know it wouldn't be different. I know it would be different, though. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 whatever the influences that both Tim and I had at that time is what came out in those pictures. Yeah. And clearly, when we started them, we had read The Hobbit first, which was a children's book. Yep. But it's, so it's, you know, I mean, he wrote it for his kids, right? In, in, in a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. You know, and it was a pretty simple story. And so I approached it like a kid's book. Almost. Yeah. If you look at some of the early illustrations. Yes, they very much Especially have. Gandalf visits Bilbo. There's that long shot where yeah. Bilbo. Even, even Riven, was Rivendell? Yeah, yeah. 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 Rivendell. The house of Rivendell. Very cottagey, yeah. seven dwarf looking place. I remember talking to Tim and, you know, I, this was 20 years ago when I was talking to him. And then he's looking back 20 years from that and saying, Ugh, why did I paint it like that? <laughs> well, I think, you know, one of the triggering things was like, because I watched the whole Rings yeah. again trilogy recently, two weeks, last week. Okay. It was Gene. And what is it? it? Somewhere in the text, I guess, and then in the film, I guess in the text, because I didn't read the book again, was Gandalf refers to Rivendell as the last homely house. So you that, that says, yeah. oh, homely is, oh, oh it's cozy. Homely. Okay, Not I'm homely, like ugly, okay. homely. <laughs> Homely like home, home. Yeah. like home, not a palace, not a castle, not a city, Yeah, not a city, a home, you know, cold, cozy place. That's a, so that's what hit me. You know, that's maybe, that may be shallow. I don't know, but that's what, that's where that Well, went. has anyone ever felt at home in a palace? Not that I know. I, not that I, I, know. I, 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 I've not talked if, to anybody. If you've before. gotten to that point, then you're <laughs> not a part of humanity. Right. Yeah. Um, it echoes too much. Hello, 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 hello. It takes so long to get to the bathroom. Does. You know what I'm saying? Right about <laughs> So, now I know that the the, the later paintings that you did, um, that you know, you went back and you were doing them based on the sketches and things like that. You incorporated more of your updated color palette. You know, the dioxazine purple came into the shadows. Mm -hmm. and things like, okay. Gave everything a much That's more. That's way after the rings, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This way was after. like when you the first Urshurak. Out. Urshurak. That's when I started with. No, Urshurak. but I mean the, the specific the Lord of the Rings paintings, the, the Lord of the Rings paintings you did when the book was being published, the Tolkien book was being mm -hmm. published. Um, okay, that was. So yeah. you were painting two thousand, but yeah. the color palettes were upgraded. Yeah, different than than the subdued uh, earthen mm -hmm. earthen tones. Um, okay. Yeah. The question is that Jean's reading the questions, and she, someone asked whether or not Tim and I believed in forest spirits. Yeah, I guess. I mean, 
Uh, I, you know what I mean? Whatever that I don't know what, the, what you mean by that exactly, but yeah, the spirit of the forest, that the, the living reality of the forest, the the beauty, the magnificence of it, the the fact that later on, so like sprites, fairies, pixies, sprites, sprites, fairies, and pixies. I did as a kid. My mother raised. Maybe they're remembering or quote that my my mother particularly raised him and me to believe in that. We would go. We would back then in Detroit get in a bus before my parents had a car and drive. To, Go to the in the edge of the city, which you could find back then, the edge of the city, <laughs> and they'd pack a lunch, and we'd spend a whole day in the forest, just kind of walking around. And my dad was very much into nature and the trees, and he would it's an elm, there's an elm, blah blah blah, and we get into the whole talk about that. And my mother very much into the spirits, the the, the sprites, spirits, fairies, elves, gnomes, whatever lives there that you don't see, they don't come out, you know, and blah blah blah. So I, yeah, I. I Whoever is there, yeah, <laughs> I, I sure did. I guess I still do. But did you? Did you when you? Uh, oh, okay. you well, while we did the rings, did yeah. we believe? Well, I mean, the, the that the essence of that kind of system and belief was there. Yeah, I, look, you got to believe everything when you're drawing a picture. You have to believe it in a way. You, you really, I don't know if you have to. Yeah. I do. What I, would I, make you feel better? Do you like the fact that Greg believed in forest sprites while he was painting them? If so. He did. <laughs> I mean, why it, it? Why make the choice not to? Right. You got a choice. You know, the fork in the road. Do you want to not believe it, or do I want to believe it? Well, I want to believe it. It appeals to my imagination. That's the whole gig, right there. Imagination. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I went with my kids. We, my wife and I, went all in on belief in like Santa and the Tooth Fairy. Yeah. And my daughter loved the tooth fairy absolutely loved it like you know we would write notes in like miniature font you know and roll yeah, it up as like great. a little scroll yeah. <laughs> uh and we gave her name josie was the name of the tooth fairy of her tooth fairy <laughs> and then all of our kids had different tooth fairies so i guess they're a race of fairy uh, but oh man she, she preferred the tooth fairy josie to, to all the so other, all the others, Easter Bunny or all of them. Yeah, my kids never bought into the Easter Bunny. Yeah, Santa, all about Santa. Yep, yeah. Santa was cool. I believed in Santa until I was, you know, beyond. I should believe in Santa. I used to argue with the kids on the block. <laughs> they, would, they would tell me, you know, what I mean, what are you talking about? That's your parents. They buy them. No, 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 no. You know, and I, they they kept it going. Well, again, my parents, my mother particularly, had this. She wanted to keep Tim and me as young as possible for as long as possible i think not young and stupid but young internally so that you she could foster our imaginations now that is such a uh, an interesting i don't know if it's a, if dichotomy is the right word here but i'm going to use it it's an interesting dichotomy that you she, she was pretty strict catholic right she was a catholic well not strict that there was no statues around the house, or they did minimal prayer. They, okay. There was no grace before or after meals ever. They did the they did the very bare, bare mass on Sunday, confession and communion at Easter once a year because that's your Easter duty. Mm -hmm. And unless you did that back then, you were excommunicated. So you, in order to stay in the church, you had to do your confession and communion at, at Easter time. So they would do it once a year, and and, you know, not eat meat on Friday, right? Those no. rules that yeah. were there. The big there was a bunch of rules, seven or whatever the hell they were, and and they stuck by that. But there was no constant discussion or talk about it at all. At okay, all. that's interesting. I guess I had that mis uh, misconception based specifically on then you and Tim growing up and then going to work for the church. I thought that was just a natural progression of your. No, not at all. Absolutely not at all. Again, she was very much supportive of our art. That was the main thing that she stood behind, got behind, encouraged us in, uh, and be critical too. She wouldn't just say, oh, that's nice. She would get into looking at stuff and making observations about it. And again, I've said this many times. It's the key one that sticks in my memory. I, was, I, had a, I, was, I had a Bugs Bunny comic book, and I had a piece of bond paper on top, and I'm tracing the, the picture. And she walked into the bedroom and saw me tracing, and she went, she screamed, don't trace. <laughs> you know, don't trace, don't not trace. I was a little, I don't know, five, 
five years old, four years old. And, and she said, here, copy it, you know, so that you, you know, again, knowing that that's your eye, hand coordination, it, all that business, yeah. you know, and uh, that, that, that's like, I mean, to get that early on it is, is, is critical from her. It was very critical yeah. in the imagination thing. And don't and, and don't and think for yourselves. Don't follow the crowd, which again is very being a Roman Catholic in the nineteen forties. That's out when there. I was there, and she was born where in the teens. For the, say, think for yourself. Well, you know, later on, you start to think, well, oh, wow, she that was a radical. And you know, <laughs> in the older you get, like I'm eighty two now, I think, I'm like, oh my God, how am I get to get to know my parents better? You know, I knew them up to a point, and then when I moved here to Jersey and or saw and we did, you know, and we went through all kinds of stuff. And, and yeah, I, I constantly, it's, oh my God, if only I could have a conversation with my father right now. Just, we could just really communicate on all kinds of different levels and, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and, it, and have me express to them the value that they were, the extreme value that they were to me personally. And, you know, you don't do that as a kid growing up. You never take that up. It happens when it's all over and you can't do it anymore. <laughs> That's the story of life, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, relationships like that. They, you know, they come, you know, with their own complexities, Mm -hmm. you know, and you don't always think about the good. You know, sometimes we get hung up on the bad too much or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Well, your own stupid ego. As, as yeah. a young ki- kid, you think you know it all and all yep. that's crap. And, you know. As everyone does. <laughs> right, as everyone old. does. Um, but I think, you know, like with, with that, you might not be able to come to a full appreciation of it until later. Mm-hmm. Right, after you've gone through many phases in your own life, yeah. your ups and downs and experiences, and seeing, oh my God, how did how they got to they got through this, and they got through that, and they got through the Great Depression. They survived all that. And they survived this. And that. Oh my God! Yeah. So, anyway, but art on this art, art, art is yeah, yeah. Well, it's probably say go to my mother. Well, my mom watches. So. Does she? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> so let's get back to the art. All right. So. Where we jumped off off on our, our tangent, you know, we were talking about that the imagination, mm-hmm. uh, you know, being the embodiment of God, you know, from, from William Blake's quote. Mm-hmm. And again, over the last couple of weeks, here and there in our larger conversation, we we're talking about the responsibility of art and how making that art, uh, not just necessarily for the moment, but art that can transcend mm-hmm. and I don't know whether we discuss this or not, but I think we both agree that it's almost impossible to set out to just, yes, I'm going to try and send the moment. Yeah, I'm going to make a piece of art that does this. No, no. But sometimes you probably have to have this moment of inspiration mm-hmm. that is either just a complete formulation from within or it is that spark of inspiration coming from without from a circumstance, from, yeah. from an experience, from an happening, yes. from, yeah. 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 yeah, I think to sit down and try to make it happen, it doesn't happen. Well, it just, you know, it just doesn't happen. I, it, not for me, anyway. It just doesn't happen. And But it's all, here you go. You, but the, the, everything we're talking about in this reflecting, this experience that, that I was going through back in the day, but the, when I got down to it, it's like, how do you approach it? Well, my approach is always to be realistic, representational. You know, that is to say, you know, a, a solid space I'm trying to create to bring you into it. Yeah. So that effort's all there. That's a, that's a pragmatic, conscious effort in this world. You know, yes. what I mean? in, yes. in, in in this technical world, yep. in, in this, in, and but then again, it's it, that's the effort. But then it gets. Combined with that, or parallel, or part of all that too, is 
the beauty of everyday things, the beauty of a busted piece of glass and the way the light hits it and the way the, 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 the substance behind it shows through it and the analysis and the understanding of the color of that, the texture of that, how to, in your illusion of paint and it, it, to create that as a real, real thing, that there's a there's a whole world in that that that's a, that's exciting that's a, that's a, you know what I mean yes it, you know you become absorbed with also other than the deeper meaning of the entire image. Well, I think that it all that all goes hand in hand, and that you know all of that stuff you know that you're playing mm -hmm. out and you're getting lost in that the the technical the technical the technical creates the vehicle to transport the message. Right, exactly. And that has to be that has to be done with great integrity, belief, passion as, as much as you are about the subject itself. The yeah, it turns you on initially. Yeah. You have to be turned on through all the phases that you're going through is is mechanical and boring they may look to people. To paint sand. That that looks boring as shit. No, it's a turn on. I get the textures just right, all the little stones with the cast shadows and, and, and how to have it look naturalistic. No. You know, like my whole thing about about almost everything I do, whether I achieve it or not, is questionable. But truth to nature mm -hmm. is there in my head, you know, being true to nature. The way things move, the way things are shaped, the way things look, the, the, the light, understanding light, no. uh, perspective, anatomy, all that. Being true to that whole world that we inhabit, yeah. that all of us inhabit, not just the guy like you or me that is painting pictures and thought of it as, as some other way than that. Yes, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're thought of as an artist as some, ooh, flighty guy, or <laughs> some drunk or some hedonist, you know, or, you know, what? Yeah, Adrian Wagner wants to know where this painting fits into the world. Adrian Wagner, she wants... Wants to know where does that painting that is behind you fits into the world? Where does it fit into the world? Yeah. Like... Whose world? The world. I guess. The world? Oh, that's I don't, that's kind of a broad. It fits in, in your the, hallway. It's in the hallway upstairs. That's very funny. <laughs> it's in my world there, but it's always fit into the world here. That picture to me is as real and as relevant and as meaningful as it was when I painted it in 1972, three somewhere back then, you know. And it's always those things that I look at, like an image like this, and I think. You know, I have lots of ideas like this stacked up in boxes and piles of paper all over the place. And I've not gotten to them. And I think, God damn it. We talked about, we said this last week. No. If not now, when? No. You know? <laughs> but the, you know, to, to go back in, you know, in, yeah. into your stream, there, you, you know, you're talking. There's a couple thoughts, that, you know, that I, I had is that, you know, you said you have to have the integrity. You can't half-ass it. No, never. Even, even if you're working, even if it's abstract or you're the message you know, is loose or whatever, you can't just do it. Oh, I'm getting this done with the hell with it. What can I get away with? Yeah. How little do I have to do? Like people, that's maybe, maybe, good enough. That's good enough. That's good. If, it's, if, if that's in your head that it's good enough, it's never good enough. Number one, it's never good enough. Period. In the story, it's never good enough. You know, and 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 do you can't? I don't care what. Down to doing a toilet training book. You have to approach it, the drawings, and I did that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a toilet training book in 1974. Boring little kid standing there pulling his diapers and stuff. It, you still have to try to give it something. Whether that be at least minimally a good drawing. The drawing should be good. You know, the, the structure. Of the, the irony is not lost on me that you said boring little kid. And I have to point out that his son Gregory posed... <laughs> Yeah, he was not really a boring little kid, no. The, the drawing of the of the imagery, you know, it could be taken as very bored. But he, I had to get him to cry. Ooh, I can't do this. You know, do stuff like that. Take pictures of him, which we hold over his head till this day. You know? <laughs> show the book. But I like to, I enjoy the fact, well, this is a segue. I, I enjoy doing the fact a lot of the times if we give a talk, you know what I mean? Everybody knows it. My brother and I did this Star Wars poster. You know, it's kind of famous, I guess. And I say, you may know me for this, hold the Star Wars poster up, but do you know me for this? And I hold up the toilet training book. And everybody laughs and says, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, and I guess that's what I'm after is to get a laugh. Yeah. But 
I didn't give the toiletry book any less effort than I did the Star Wars books. You know, and it it paid bills off, like the Star Wars poster did. <laughs> yep, you paid bills with it, and that's that's part of that whole commercial realm. You're, that's what you're doing it for. And even though you're doing it for overtly for money, I mean that's that's you're doing it. You still have to give it everything you got. You can't, like you say, be half-assed. You can't be half-assed about anything. I mean, in, in this world of doing art for a living, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what you'd want to be. What the hell's the point of it? I mean. The whole thing is to enjoy the hell out of it and do the best you can do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And to me, I don't understand. I never grew up with the mentality, because I've always been an artist. With my brother, we were on the same wavelength. And the and the, and my, the best friends as I had as a kid, fortunately, I'd connect with, with guys that were on that same wavelength. So, you know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. so we always, I always had this small cluster of people over the years that were way up there in terms of that kind of an obsession. So I never really knew what it was like over here outside that obsession. And then once I started to realize it, I thought, how, how the, why, why do they get up in the morning? <laughs> you, there's oh, nothing to live for. You, yeah. you, oh, I gotta go to fucking work. Thank God it's Friday. TGIF became a, I didn't even know what that meant. You know what I mean? That you're yeah. always, you're waiting for the weekend. You're waiting for Friday night. You're wait. it always like, my God, this is horrendous! This is the way the human race lives. I mean, really, that, that those 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 thoughts were coming to me once I started becoming like aware of what the hell was going on in the world. How is that possible? Because I always had this idea that everybody had something that they were taken by. You know? Yeah. I think everyone probably has the potential for that. Yeah. Yeah. The door hasn't been opened. The possibility is not there. It was. Yeah, they just haven't. They owned it. Or, the, you know, yeah. It, it, I was very fortunate to have had, like I say, the parents I did. Yeah. And they have a twin brother. Because uh, in what we were after trying to achieve, it's the old phrase, the loneliness of the long distance runner wasn't there. Yeah. You're, you're your runner. Yep. You know, you're, you're, I'm, I'm sure that you enjoy your loneliness. Uh, I do. You're with nature. Yep. But I'm saying, you know, when it's like you got to run 80 miles and, you know, you're just all by yourself and you're in your head alone forever. For a long time. It's struggling to keep it up. Yep. It's better if there's another person there in a the room and you're doing it together and you're kicking each other's butt and you're inspiring each other and you're learning together. Mm -hmm. You're one, you know, you're constantly in that. Then I had that. I don't know if I would ever gone anywhere if it wasn't for that. I, I doubt it. I, I know I wouldn't have. You know, so I was fortunate to have it. Other people are not. I can't imagine you being born into a world or family, an environment that would disallow your 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 obsession. You know, it's, I, I was listening to uh, an interview with uh, Dan Rather and Getty Lee, who was the, mm -hmm. the bassist and lead singer right. from mm -hmm. the band Rush. Yep. And, you know, he talked about that that same thing, that obsession, right? You know, just getting obsessed with it and going all in. And his his father passed away when he was very young, like maybe 12 or something. Mm -hmm. um, but then he decided to leave high school to pursue music, right? I guess broke his mother's heart. She didn't talk to him for a year, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so in the course of that interview, they, he, they were reflecting on, you know, his, you know, would you, do you wish you maybe would have finished school for your mom or whatever? And, and talking about with his dad and he essentially said, you know, his, his dad, well, his dad was a, a nice guy. He did have a bit of a temper. And he was a very, you listened to him, you know, mm -hmm. and that he felt that perhaps if his dad would have been alive, his life wouldn't have gone anywhere in, in, yeah. the, way, in the way that it went. Yeah. You know, because he, he wouldn't have pursued yeah. the music. Yeah. So yeah, it's just that when he said, you know, I guess it's fate. Yeah. So. Fate depends on what you want to believe. Yeah. Destiny, fate. <laughs> you know, karma, luck of the draw. Luck of the draw. I don't, we'll call it what you will. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, but the, that's the word, though, obsession. Yeah. You know, unless you have that, and that's why I thought everybody had some sort of an obsession, because I always was completely obsessed, completely and totally obsessed. And people, you know, over the years ago. That's a God-given talent that you've got. You know, like, oh, you mean, yeah. oh, God God walks around and says, oh, 
you. I'm going to give you this. No, 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 no. You're going to be a bum. You're going to be Aqualung. You're going to be on a park <laughs> bench. And you, 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 this, no, you, no, you're going to drop dead when you're 10. No, God, no, oh, you, no, I'm going to give you this talent. I thought, well, that, that image doesn't really work well to me, unless the God is demented. You know well, what I'm let saying? Me, let, me, let, let me phrase it to you this way, see if this way makes sense to you. Perhaps uh, God, we're, we're, again, we're okay, going okay, to yeah. that he's there. <laughs> Right, he, drop, she, it, yeah, or, whatever. Drops, maybe not art, but something into everyone. Mm -hmm. And then whether they choose or are able to realize it, there that's go. the realm like of free that. will. That, that, yeah. Yeah. That we, we all have our individual genius and our own right. capabilities, but the reality is, is not everyone's going to realize it. Yeah, that's true. And the word, though, comes back to this, what I started us off with, is obsession. Mm -hmm. So when I say that about, like people say, God, talent, that's the word, you know, after mainly it, whether it's God-given or wherever, yeah. uh, however you want to look at it, hereditary, you know, heredity, uh, environment, whatever, uh, obsession's the issue. I say to them, no, that's the gift. The gift is obsession. That's the gift. And the, the cassette, and I always jokingly, I say it's a, 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 a OCB, not OCD. Obsessive compulsive behavior. Yeah, that's what gets you there. <laughs> yeah, that's what gets you there it's to be able to the driving force to pull it off. Yeah, you have to be obsessed and compelled. I was, you know, and I've always been that way. I mean, and that's the thing. That's the gift. And if you ain't got that, I, I'm not. I don't know what that's like not to have that. Yeah, I don't know what that's like. Yeah, you know. Yep. So, and that's internal. That's something I never went and looked for. Yeah, no, I just what the hell five year old kid, four year old yeah. kid would go look to be obsessed and compelled to try to get it right. Yeah. God, I gotta get this right. It because it was nothing but driving 50% of the time was driving maniacal fits, <laughs> screaming fits that Tim and I would have, throwing everything in the corner and saying, I quit, I quit, I quit. You know, and really literally freaking out and throwing it all down and running outside. God, I quit. I'm not doing it now. And then calming down, taking your breath, <laughs> kicking each other's butt. All right, all right, let's get back. Go back to it. Go, go back to it. You know, fall down, get up, keep at it. Fall down, keep up, get at it. That's the driving obsession thing. You know what I mean? Yes. Now, I want to. I was having a this same kind of conversation. The 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 talent. Uh, I don't know what that word versus uh, <laughs> dedicated labor. Dedicated know? labor, yeah, right. Um, and again, and I, uh, I'm going to use that that interview one more time, you know, because it came up in that. I was having a conversation before I watched the interview, but it came up in the interview again, and where he said, you know, he does believe that people are given different levels of aptitude, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah, totally. Yeah. Now. And I, because talent without diligence is useless. Mm -hmm. Totally. You know, it just, it's just, it's chaos. It's just a floundering. Yeah. Uh, but conversely of that, you could, there are certain people that could work extremely hard and never rise. And never get beyond a point. Yeah. I, well, yeah. And I don't know what that's about. That's there's a whole bunch of other conditions that would apply that would yeah. bring that to be. And I don't know if I've ever risen above anything personally. I, 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 I just, well, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna wheel. I'm just like I'm the the, the you know well, the, the, I, I know that I I know that you're not just saying that because no, these I, con these are conversations that we have in private too. Mm -hmm. But for the sake of this conversation, there's a reason we're doing a, a live stream show that features you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because you have risen, you've risen above. You've, well, you know, because of a series of, 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 of events and many other people. Yeah. Number one, in my present moments, Gene, mother, father, brother, mm -hmm. Fulton J. Sheen, Bob D'Amelio, an artist mentor 10 years older than me in a time frame of my life that was critical, painter. Mm hmm an art director at an ad agency and a painter and a fantastic guy that really 
got me to see what we never saw before. There are those people like that that I've been, and I talked to another friend way back in the day, Dave Abelos, who's a theologian, a layman theologian, very avant-garde theologian, said that his belief was that these guides, he called them, that show up in your life. You know, yeah. you know they're, they're guides that show up, yeah. point the way further, like Virgil and Dante, I suppose, you know what I mean? Taking yeah. you through this. If, you're, if you've got the whatever to see that, you yeah. know, they may yep. be in everybody's life and they don't have the vision or the moment or the peace of mind or the clarity to to see, see that yeah and i don't know i mean fortunately for me that's always been there and i've been able to grasp it at that moment without knowing what would come out of it and what would be beyond it at all yeah but just seeing that is significant at that moment and, and taking it on and pursuing it these are human beings people that have risen up yeah yep. in my life you know that lead further yeah go further so yeah and in that whole process I stayed at my craft, mm -hmm. pursuing that, trying to get it better and better and better. But there was these other people that, were, for me, that were always there in a way guiding things. You know? Yeah. And that's, that, I mean, people, that's again, without that, I have to say, you know, you don't, I would have never got there. I would never got, you would, I wouldn't be well, sitting yeah, here talking yeah. with you right now. Yeah. I mean, well, your confession of that is, you got three minutes. you're humble. <laughs> you know, you, well, that, that, I mean, it's just a fact. I mean, it's just real. It's a truth. Yeah, but I mean, there are people that would be like, "Yeah, I did it all myself. I did it my, I did it my way." way. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine, and that's cool, and people believe that, and that's 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 an individual way of looking at things, and that's that's neat. But three minutes. Three minutes. All right. right. Doctor's appointment. Doctor Gene Gene is a chiropractor. All right. So, I mean, I could. There's so much more that I actually wanted to say about this painting. Well, we can do it next time. All right. Bring, 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 you know, we can go on about it. Right? Yeah, I wanted to break down some elements. So anyway, folks, we hope you enjoyed this conversation that we had this evening. It was a little bit more free form, free going. We yeah. came up with Greg literally five minutes to go before the show said, hey, I'm going to go grab this painting. Um, <laughs> so, but anyway, if you like what we do, if you like what you hear and what you see, Please, you know, leave a comment, drop a like, subscribe, share it with your friends. We appreciate everybody that's doing all that. We really, really do. Um, also, coming up uh, either tomorrow or starting early next week, we're going to putting out the ad for the commissions list, right? So Greg will be available for commissions. I'm going to be in there. A few other of the Spire Web Art artists. Um, so that's going to go out, and you'll want to get on the list ASAP within that first kind of this first week and a half, two weeks of September, to ensure that it's going to be done in time for the holiday season. But again, just let everybody that's watching this know now, that's coming up. Uh, and as always, if you're interested in purchasing some art or drawings or books or whatever, Go to spiderwebart.com and you'll see all of the wonderful stuff there. Link is in the bottom left-hand side of your screen. Good night, folks, and good night, Greg. Thank you. You're always an inspiration, man. Here, I'd like to end on this note right here. Of this image that I love so much that I keep it pinned up on my bulletin board. This has no bearing on anything other than I like the picture. What is that? Good night and good luck. <laughs>